What's up guys, I'm Jamal Nolan. Welcome back to another Snowfall Breakdown. This is season two and I'm doing a complete breakdown. I have more Easter eggs and more details that you've missed than ever before. But before we get started, I wanna say thank you to every single person that has been understanding about the delay of this. Like you guys don't even know what it's taking me to get this out to you guys this week. But season three complete breakdown will be following in just a few days. So bear with me. Also, if you're new to this channel, please be sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe and bell notification because I am on a huge journey of 15,000 subscribers in the year 2022 and I cannot get there without you. But without further ado, let's just hop right into episode one, Sightline. Now Sightline is a hypothetical line from someone's eyes to what is seen. And this episode is a complete sightline from us, the viewer, to see into the lives of our main character. But also our main characters are taking a look into their situation. We're getting a clear sightline on their situation. Ronald Reagan addressed the nation on this situation in Nicaragua on March 16, 1986. This is actually a bit of continuity mistakes on the writer's behalf because season one took place in June of 1983. They're saying this is four months later, so uh, we're a little bit off on our timeline there. No big deal. We get a chance to see where everyone's operation is today. Franklin now owns the ice cream shop that I spoke about in the season one breakdown. He uses it to covertly serve the fiends, but also take care of the kids. This is a full circle moment for the season one ice cream breakdown. Listen, we see the final notices here on Sissy's table, and I'm in it. I'm into my full detailed detective mode. The address for Franklin House is 1127 West 56th Avenue. That's the official Snowfall House. I was so excited when I found this, and then I Googled it, and like, it was confirmed on Google. Somebody been figured this out, but whatever. Teddy gets completely cut off by the government here, and this is gonna play a major part in his entire arc and his storyline throughout this season. Avi tells Franklin that he's growing like weed. You know, not too long ago, you were happy with just a few hundred dollars. How we grow, huh? Like weeds. He's not only referring to Franklin, but he's also talking about his business and how quickly and out of control that his business is getting. But he's also referring to Franklin, like his maturity, his drug dealing persona, he's growing very, very fast. As they are discussing Leon's bail, look at the look that he gives Franklin and Jerome. Franklin know what's up. Franklin has wisened up so much and he is not trusting anybody or taking any chances of getting robbed or set up ever again. Left you, you got the five G's on you now. Let's get this shit done. I don't want those two knowing what I'm holding. Try roll straight. He always has been. You getting paranoid? Avi and Leon are locked up. So yeah, maybe I'm a little on edge. He is a very fast learner. This sign outside of Reed's dad house that says Reagan Bush '84 sign confirms my inconsistency that I was talking about on the timeline earlier. Immediately, we are given foreshadow that Reed's brother is a pilot. He had on a bomber jacket, which is a pilot's trademark jacket. In the bar is Kansas City Chiefs apparel all on the wall, which confirms he is in Kansas, which earlier he told the young lady, hey, can you make a phone call to Kansas, which basically signified that he was going to get a pilot. Kansas City. I'm sorry? Have the plane delivered to Kansas City. Kansas side, any small airport west of downtown will do. What's in Kansas City? Peaches now kills Biscuit, which confirms Franklin's suspicion to not trust anybody for no reason. The exact conversation that he was having with Jerome earlier is confirmed. So the brother who's paranoid now, who I told you not to mention that fucking money. They wouldn't even thought twice about this shit. He ain't make a big deal if he got yeah, that business on him. Franklin now is steps ahead of everybody, including Jerome, who has been teaching him the game. Me and Jerome gonna load up the bodies, drive them out, bury them. This right here is actually the very first time that we get to see Peaches talk and we see how valuable of an asset that he is. 
Quick note, Mel brings Franklin the B-Day card that comes up later on in my season four breakdown that I already posted months ago. So check that out if you haven't seen it. You can see right here with this conversation with Lucia that her and Franklin share very similar principles and ideology for their community. Empowering Mexicans in this country, ensuring we have a voice that cannot be ignored. This investigation isn't looking too good to read because now they have pictures of the entire team of people that he worked with. Then check out this sneaky little CIA kidnap tactic that Reed pulls off at the end of episode one. How is your neck? It's good, it's good. <laughs> Sorry about this, kid. Now, episode two, the day everything changed. This is it right here. This is the day that everything changed for, for everybody, quite frankly. Pedro is back with a backstory about love. So this is about a woman? Yeah, we began dating. She helped me dry out. Franklin and Leon are tied up in a basement with this flickering light. And you can tell that this is more of a scare slash interrogation tactic that is not really like practical. Reed is observing Franklin and Leon's conversation while they are tied up in the basement. He's doing this for interrogation purposes, but he ultimately uses this to understand Franklin's mentality as a strong-willed, smart, resourceful individual, even under duress. Look, 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 whoever you are, I swear to you, I swear to you, I don't know shit about how Avi got busted. Police, I think you do know. Say it faster, 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 know, faster. Man. Well, Leon is snitch. All right, ch check with the courts. You don't believe me. Right here is the first time that Franklin and Reed actually talk. Strange beginning for what will soon become a very lucrative partnership. Fuck it, Franklin. Piece of shit gonna put us down like dog. Fuck, fuck him. Fuck up, Leon, man. Try to stay alive? That's not fuck the way. Man. Come on, Franklin, fuck, think fuck, about fuck, it. Fuck, I'm gonna fuck, shoot him. I know who you were in his brain. Who am I, Franklin? Who am I? You're the connect. Franklin not only impresses Reed, but he convinces him that he is the right man for the job. Franklin's communication skills far exceeds his environment. You've lost the buyer, and I'm out of my supply. Why don't we help each other? <laughs> Come on. You were selling dime bags on the street corner six months ago. You're gonna take Avi's place? I'd like to try. This is a vetting process for Teddy, and in this moment, he realized right then and there that Leon is too hot-headed. We're introduced to Wanda in this season, and like I said before, Wanda and Mel's storyline are two of like the saddest storylines in this show for me. Kevin and his team, those boys being on the wrong corner is the full reason that Lucia and the Mexican even found out about crap. So Kevin, in a lot of ways, get the ball rolling for all the bad events that occur in this season. Franklin flies for the first time, which exposes him to a whole new world and different possibilities. His mind is completely changed from this point on, on what's possible for his life. This is the moment right here, if you see in the background, where Reed knew that Franklin could be special and he took a liking to him at that exact moment. A couple days. You'll be ready? Mm hmm. Ten keys. Ten grand a key. And I'll uh I'll pay to fix the car up. Nah, I don't need it. Just need your product. I understand why you did what you did today. I do. From here on out, no games, no tricks, no bullshit. You be straight up with me, I'll be straight up with you. But if you ever fuck with me, or anybody that I care about, then it won't be good for you. Franklin wanted Reed to understand that he is a straightforward businessman. He threw out the screwdriver he grabbed to let him know, I'm not as vulnerable or gullible as you think I am. I got street smarts and I'm always a few steps ahead like a chess player, which really impressed Reed. Franklin informs everybody that things are about to take off because of the conversation that he had with Reed and the agreement that they set up, but also just his mind being exposed to brand new things. The organization has to and will be tightened up. These boys should have never been out there on that corner. And look at how unprepared they were. 
dude fumbling with the gun, moving slow. Like, this is just not it, man. They should have never been out there, bro. Franklin's biggest struggle early on was his ongoing battle between his desire to make something of himself and to have his mom approval and love. Episode three, Prometheus Rises. This is a book that was written by Robert Anton Wilson, which kind of discusses the complexity of the thinker versus the provider, and it came out in 1983 which again is right on track with our timeline. But this concept of thinker versus provider is the exact situation of Franklin. He's not only the ultimate thinker, but he's also the provider for the entire group, as well as Teddy, as well as Lucia. Like everybody is battling with this thinker versus provider dilemma. But also Prometheus was a god in Greek mythology who is best known as the god of fire and he brought fire to mankind, but he also helped humanity in the form of technology, knowledge, and more general civilization. So if you think about that, Prometheus is credited for bringing fire to mankind, which Franklin did the same thing to his neighborhood. He brought that fire crack to the neighborhood. Reed brought his brother into this business so he had someone that he could trust, but also so he was not alone in this cold, hard business. You know this because literally moments after he was told he would be alone, he decided to go see his brother. Oso's conversation confirms what we already assumed about Pedro. This moment right here is where Franklin takes full control of everything. Don't call Mookie seen it, man. They really did. So you gonna go and kill the first Mexican you see? That's what you do, man. Ain't your daddy a panther? They hit you. You, you just out here with your M16 backing this shit up. You don't want to warn me about the motherfuckers in the first place. They kill Yo, I'm being OCD at this point, but this is kind of what happens when you are overly analyzing a TV show. As they walk into the house, Kevin just disappears for some reason. But if you look really closely, you can see the cameraman outside. I know, I know, I'm overanalyzing the show. It's greatly produced. I, I couldn't do no better, but I'm just pointing out things that I Todo muy bien? Sometimes one looks good, but it's rotten at the core. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Lucia is clearly saying this as a metaphor for her, but she doesn't even seem to catch it. Franklin and Lucia speak over the phone, and this is the first dispute of many that Franklin would have to settle with a potential business partner without violence. The look of surprise on Oso's face when he sees Franklin, like they both were kind of looking at each other like, hmm, just the way life goes, I guess. Franklin slaps Kevin in the face, and then he gives him this look right here, like, bro, you got the audacity, the nerve, the unmitigated gall, like Stephen A. Smith said, to, to raise a gun up to me? Like, who you think you are, bro? But this moment right here just continues to cement Leon's loyalty and respect for Franklin. Before his meeting with Reed, Franklin is reading this book, which is The Old Man and the Sea which is an epic story of a struggle between an old seasoned fisherman and the greatest catch of his life. Again, more parallels to Franklin's life and every main character in this show. The writer and director are intentionally leaving these breadcrumbs here for anybody like myself who's gonna upset and catch it later on. Maybe you're using the wrong bank. Maybe you can show me the right one. When I do that, maybe you can start taking more than 10 keys a week. Still a couple deals of 10 first. And maybe we could talk doing some more. Sure. Business is only as good as the people you work with. Reed begins to take Franklin under his wing because he knows he is smart and it has served them both very well. Franklin's success is obviously in his favor, but he's also starting to take a liking to him. Now this is the beginning of Andre's and Franklin tension and it happens right in front of Mel. Now that car was definitely a loose end for sure, but again, accept the L and they learn from it. Cops beat up Franklin dad here at the end of the episode. Episode four, Jingle Bell Rocks. This is just referring to the Christmas time. Cops were clearing an empty lot in an effort to make our city pretty in time for the Olympics. The Olympic games in 1984 is actually the first appearance for the famed Carl Lewis. And they are actually cleaning up the streets and that's why Franklin's dad was beat up. Now you can see here that the logo actually evolved from the burning ashes of last season to a stack of crumpled up money perhaps. Franklin opens up an account 
with a new license at a bank that specializes in shady practices turned legit with offshore bank accounts and now the opportunity to do money laundry. It's not that I don't understand. Look, it's the same rate I get. It's the exact same deal. Yeah, no offense, Ray, but I still don't actually know you. Thought this is what I wanted. Now that I'm here, handing all my money over to another dude I don't know, trusting that all this is legit, I don't know. Doesn't seem right. See, this is what I'm talking about with Franklin having trust issues. Things seem to be too good to be true at this thing. And I, I, I understand it. All the times he's been screwed over in the streets. But now he has to understand and adapt to the fact that there are real shady business people that are legit on the up and up. I have what some people might call control issues. Ha! Control issues, now you think? Rick, that, that's an understatement from Rick. Louis and Jerome marriage is now strained, causing Louis to feel used and unappreciated by Jerome and Frank. Right here, she used this opportunity to stage the show. This was all for Lucia's benefit, completely staged. This, this situation is amazing. It worked like a charm, and Lucia is no longer suspicious. She needed a way to earn that trust and devise the perfect plan. Lucia is none the wiser. But to me, it's two ways that you can tell that this was fake. One, she wasn't even talkative before this moment. Now all of a sudden she all big and bad. And two, Pedro was way too calm after someone allegedly slapped his wife. It doesn't make any sense. Franklin decides here to be, it's best for him to be just the overseer, but also he wanted to take care of his guy. How's your mom's? Heard she was sick. You got insurance? A couple days in the hospital, you out a few G's. Need a loan or something? Again. Cousin wanna go college? This shit adds up. If I get need, I'll call you. Franklin is getting generous all of a sudden, probably out of guilt for what has happened and his lack of response violence. So I took some from the trucks and gave it to Delroy Mama. Figured we owed him. Kevin just admitted that he stole from Franklin and that is a big red flag. This is the first domino to fall of many. It's always one person in the crew that's like this, bruh. That's never satisfied. That's always doing something shady. Here you can see in Franklin's room, he has Bruce Lee photos on his wall, but he also has a poster of Oso. That shows you how big of a fan he is. And I believe that this is a poster of his dad on his wall as well. He has Ali on his wall. That says a lot about the people that he admires and looks up to. Sissy brings Alton into the house because Franklin's not there and she's feeling lonely. She needs somebody to fill that space. Now our suspicions are absolutely confirmed. I and this thing end up doing what you hoped? Yeah. Franklin sneaks in this lion that he got from the bank into his mom's house. Plus, Gustavo gets a ring from Lucia. Everything seems to be going very well for them. Episode 5, Serpentine. There's some snakes in the grass, and I think we all know who they are. Pedro, his fiance, Ivy is out of prison now, and Franklin is annoyed, nervous, suspicious, for a very good reason. Come on, you're being a little bit paranoid. I'm a black man in America, goddammit. Hell, he am paranoid. She took me in. Took you in. Fuck what? You, you said we was going to Fatburg. No, I said I was going to go to Fatburg. He was going to take your ass home. Oh, so it's like that. This Louis breakup is really starting to get to Jerome. You can see it in his mannerisms and the way he's behaving. Hear that? Yeah? If you're thinking about leaving, this would be a very bad time. Well, is there going to be a good time? Well, yeah. When we won the war. Now, this is complete selfish intentions on Teddy's behalf. Everything has to be about him, not his brother. Look at this smile when Lucia invites her in. She looks so satisfied. This smug look on her face just kills me, bro. Snowfall does a great job of making like really annoying bad guy women. Ugh. Gustavo is always so calm under pressure. Look at this. And you're gonna let me.
this is a dead giveaway on how she was shooting and her reflexes. They knew. They knew right away that she was a cop. All of Franklin's transgressions ended up ultimately bringing his mom and dad back together. Reed decides to partner up with Ivy on guns now instead of drugs, kind of to save his relationship with Franklin. Episode 6, The Offer. She has been building an entire case, but her board only consists of people that she's come in contact with. For instance, Matt did the pickup earlier, so instead of Reed being on the board, she has him. Kevin is really starting to feel resentment and frustration with Frank. Yeah. Hey. Alejandro's wife has been badly burned here, which is showing how dangerous this war has been. He's a good man. And he's a good soldier. I only hope that I can live up to his memory. Obviously, Reed lied about him. Like, his intentions and how he felt about him, he lied to her face. But he lied to her so she was not suspicious at all of his death. Something that I just realized is Lucia and Gustavos are essentially running this entire operation alone. They don't have no foot soldiers, no gunmen, no security. It's just them two rolling. Franklin clearly respects Oso, but he knows with the recipe, he has the power and the leverage. And he's not trying to get that up for nobody. Save your life. Maybe it's time to repay us. I'm grateful to you for that. I'll never forget it. But this is the one thing I can't do for you also. This is also a full circle moment with Franklin's dad working at Cho. Franklin Jester shows that he has some kind of heart, which he has continued to show throughout the season as it pertains to his parents. Reed picks up on someone watching the office. He's very, very aware at all times of his surroundings. Very smart. Lucia and Gustavo started planting seeds of doubt in Kevin Head, who's already the weakest link. These two are so freaking conniving, man. Just going back and watching this on the second or third time is just like, I ain't noticed this the first time how sneaky and, and, and nasty they were. Episode seven, the world is yours. This right here is Scarface was done in 1983. The timeline is late 1983. That's where we're set on this timeline. I want you to know about McDonald's. Started by these two brothers, McDonald boys. Figured out a way to better mass produce the burgers. 30 seconds after you ordered. Shit was like magic back then. They came up with the idea, but it was a man called Ray Kroc who came up with the vision. Started franchising McDonald's, turned a better burger into an empire. Pushed the brothers out in the process, stole their name. You wanna talk about gangster? Al Capone ain't got shit on my man Ray. Franklin bringing up this Ray Kroc McDonald's analogy, let us see exactly where Franklin is headed. Being a big businessman has always been Franklin's dream. Do it. Fuck any old thing with a wallet. Scraping by. Claudia is being super disrespectful and Louis is not feeling it. The bliss she had is gone. Claudia has just been using her this entire time because she thought that Louis was weak. But actually, Louis was just playing the game the whole time. I do believe she started to get some emotions and feelings, but she wasn't that attached. Louis kills Claudia and the first thing she does is call Jerome because she is just clearly way in over her head. Kevin betrays Franklin by giving Lucia the recipe and we kind of can see that that's gonna be the end of everything at that point. Lucia kills Pedro and everybody's getting, it's, things are spiraling out of control at this point. If we could really stop for a second to take a look at the evolution of the logo, it went from snowfall to burning, which was symbolizing the crack then the crack burning dissolved into ashes. The ashes turned into crumpled up dirty drug money. The drug money got burned down and now here we are. All of these logos evolving just shows the symbolism of the evolution of the show. And it goes hand in hand with the progress of the show. Episode eight, Surrender. Franklin buys Leon and Kevin a house and you can see the guilt all over Kevin's face. 
This smug look of pure joy and satisfaction just rubs me the wrong way. I swear, this, this lady get on my nerves. Two clean cut American boys running 100 keys a month from Colombia? Ugh. Boy, Lucia is just cutthroat all the way around. She does not care about nobody but herself and Gustavo. This is the start of Wanda's downfall, and Leon is doing everything he can, man, to help this girl. Now Jerome decides that he's gonna do everything with Louis 50-50. The money they making, Jerome figured it out. The Colombians are forcing Matt to do cocaine, and he says his heart is beating weird, which is extremely sad foreshadowing for his future. My heart is starting to beat weird. It's starting to beat like it's to a song, like a Colombian lullaby. For the very first time in this show, we see Franklin shoot somebody, and it's his best friend. Franklin had to pull the trigger and sh to stop Kevin from making a major, major mistake that was gonna put everybody's lives in jeopardy. Episode nine, Aftermath. This is the aftermath of all things that's gone wrong in everybody's life. Matt, Lucia with Pedro, Kevin getting shot. This is the aftermath. These two dudes really, really was trying to kill Matt, bro. And that's a really messed up thing because he ain't got nothing to do with any of this. You can see here, Franklin has a lot of remorse for his decision, but I mean, and he battling with it, but he knew it had to be done. Reed got the case shut down and now he can get back to business. He actually did it, he got it done. And now you can see here, Jerome is packing Franklin's green backpack. That backpack, that ice cream truck, boy, those things are staples for Franklin's life. You know what he doing? What you taught him? No, I know you don't know what the fuck you talking about. Fuck, I don't. Him watching you hustle, seeing the money and the girls. You made him this way. We all made him this way. All of us. You, me, Alton, Louie. We all part of that boy. This is one of the most poignant points in this entire show. We are all a part of that boy. He has his mom's heart and her smarts, but also her business acumen. He has Jerome's hustling mentality and street smarts that he's starting to pick up on. Alton, he has his dad's ambition and desire to be his own man, make his own decisions. And Louis, he has her compassion, her cunningness, and her smarts. Franklin really is the sum of all the people he was raised by. Mom, I'm telling you, he gonna do it anyway. If you can accept that, he can still be in your life. I think right here, Jerome finally gets through the sissy. I've been thinking. How you think the cops know he's gonna be there to begin with? Lucia? She know he was going over to the park to stop Kevin. So you think she set us up? She had the recipe. Smart thing would be to take out the competition. Wow, holy smokes, Franklin put two and two together very quickly. This is showing us the evolution of Franklin and his chest moves. Jeezy getting smart. Kevin dead. The fuck you mean he dead? Detectives went by Sissy house. They told her. Franklin finds out that Kevin is dead. He never meant for any of this to happen. And he's kind of reeling at this point and he doesn't know what to do. But he's a man about it and he knows he has to face his reality. Leon informs him that the streets are talking, man. As they often do. You keep after this, losing your job is gonna be the least of your worries. Tony foreshadowing her faith right here. Things are going downhill for all of our main characters and all of their stories always seem to coincide with one another. Now Franklin is dealing with the weight of his actions and he's ultimately arrested because of Andre, which I'm pretty sure doesn't sit well with Franklin. He's never really gonna forget this moment. Episode 10, education. This is all about Franklin learning how to deal with prison. Cause this is a whole new environment to him and it's something he's never had to deal with. Now the logo is in complete ashes, yet again. Franklin says absolutely nothing in prison. Not at any point, up until the time he met Ray Ray. Reed is giving her empty promises and he gets drinks with her. This might be a little bit of a pattern for Reed, if we will say that. 
bro, they done took my man's shoes and everything. God dang, bro. Like, and then jail, this is one of those situations where jail is more about bronze over brain, and Franklin, not that guy. He's just not that guy. He always thinks that he can talk situations out, and in prison, that ain't happening. Even though he's really struggling in prison, he is strong and unwavering at all times, especially in front of everybody else. Man has no priors and has no reason to run. And what kid under the age of 21 years of age doesn't have a fake ID? Right here we can see that Franklin is actually under 21 years old. That's kind of crazy. I don't know how old I always thought he was, but I definitely didn't think he was 19, 20 years old. That's nothing. Bail is denied. And this is really the first time where we see some kind of worry in Franklin's eyes. Now look, I know we ain't see eye to eye, but here we from the same hood, so we gotta stick together. Yeah. All right, cool. Then he runs into Ray Ray in jail, who lies directly to his face, just like people do in prison. They conniving, they scheming at all times. And then later on that night, his very first night, they jumped him. They beat the brakes off Franklin, bro. He just wasn't expecting that. Because again, the streets are completely different from prison. Jerome and Leon come to see Franklin. He's still solid as a rock with both of them. And Leon's advice is exact advice that Franklin needed to hear. But Leon's attitude is so prison-like. And that's something that Franklin don't have, but he's gonna have to develop if he's gonna survive it. When you leave here, go back in that dorm, grab the first nigga you see, and beat the fuck out that nigga till they grab you off of that nigga. You hear me? Show me who the fuck you is, nigga! All right, all right. No, look at this nigga face, man! Fuck! All right, come on. Show me who the fuck you is! Any nigga that motherfucking try you, beat the fuck out that nigga! All right, come on, nigga. Show me who the fuck you is, nigga! You see this guy right here getting his sheets together so he can commit suicide that night. And yep, there he goes. Franklin is actually saved on his second night because of that guy committing suicide. After the altercation with his mom and Alton, Franklin is absolutely fed up. He's finally about to stand up for himself, goes and get his shoes back, and then he threatens Ray Ray in one of the most brilliant street ways ever. You ask me why I'm in here, right? I kill my best home. Now my people on the outside, I know your family stay off of West and the 48th. Your grandma, mama, little baby sister, about this hot, right? Any of y'all little niggas step to me again, and I'll kill all your fucking families. See how fast Franklin adopts his environment? Like, he was down and out, but he figured it out real, real quickly and got himself into a position of safety. Franklin being in jail is the reason why Louie and Reed's relationship start. Because Franklin don't want the business to stop and he knows that Louie can handle it. But Franklin also learned from Louie leaving as well that he had to respect her and put her in positions of power so that way she felt appreciated. Now I know there's only one way to do things. Anybody fuck with the program, break a rule, they out. And we can see here that there's going to be some new rules going forward for everybody involved. 